Aum. Raju Sarpa Vadatmanang Jeevang Gnatva Bhayang Vahet Nahang Jeeva Paratmeti Gnatam Chenir Bhayo Bhavet Raju Sarpavat, like a snake in a rope. Atmanang, oneself. Jivang, the ego. Gyatva, considering. Bhayang, fear. Vahet, carries, is overcome. Na, not. Ahang, I. Jivaha, individuality, ego. Haratma, the Supreme Self, iti, thus, jyataha, having understood, chet, if, nirbhayaha, fearless, bhavet, becomes. Just like one who regards a rope as a snake, the soul considering itself as the egoistic individual, jiva, is overcome by fear. The soul realizing that it is not a jiva, but the supreme soul itself, becomes fearless. Namaste. So, what is fear? We all feel it. We all know it. But we try to sweep it under the rug. Because... A person paralyzed by fear can't do anything, can't take action, can't even do the necessary to take care of themselves, and so forth. So we try to minimize or suppress our fear, but actually fear is a very useful thing. It's the mind trying to warn us there's a threat to our survival as a body. The mind evolved along with the body to guard us against the perils of living in a competitive, aggressive, dangerous environment. And now we have created an environment that is like physically a lot safer, but mentally and emotionally, it's just as fearsome because there's competition among the members of society. And the threat of war, the threat of uh, cutting off of vital services like electricity or internet or, you know, food supply, you name it. There's a million sources of fear out there. And the news media capitalize on this to feed us a continuous screed of fearsome headlines, huh? Clickbait headlines. Look out for this. Watch out for that. And, oh, this guy's up to no good. <laughs> so this is amplifying the fear felt by the individual who is concerned about their survival. Now, on the bodily level, on the material level, even on the social and verbal level, this is all quite justified. It all makes sense. But if we look into what fear actually is, existentially, ontologically, it is the apprehension towards the other. What if somebody mugs me walking down the street? What if some drunk plows into my car while I'm stopped at a light? You know, what if, what if, what if? All these things. And then, oh, the regrets. Why didn't I do this when I was 18 years old? Why didn't I? Why did I do that? Oh, now I'm suffering. So one becomes afraid even of one's own stupidity of one's own lack of courage to take the action necessary. This is fear. Fear, the apprehension of the other, 
that they're going to do something to injure me, to limit my survival. So, of course, the survival of the body is, you know, a guaranteed failure. The body can live, you know, about 100 years at most, even under ideal conditions. And under difficult conditions, the lifespan is appropriately less. So who is there in this world who is not suffering? Everybody except two classes of men. The fools, the janda, huh? and the atmarama, those who are self-satisfied. Those two classes are not suffering. Everybody else is suffering. So speaking of fools, when I was in a band, I was in a band in Marin County, California called Smoke. And one of the guys in the band actually became a pretty well-known songwriter in Nashville, Duncan Payne. And he had this thing about uh, what we used to call uh, re retarded homes, huh? homes for the developmentally challenged. And about every few months, we used to do a concert at one of these homes. And let me tell you, these people are not suffering. They're enjoying. And when we came there, hey, we were the Beatles. <laughs> Best audience I've ever seen. So these people aren't suffering. Why? Because they have the developmental age of a toddler, three to seven years old. And they're protected by the state. So they're not suffering at all. They're just like children, perennial children. And then there's the people who have realized the self. For them, there is no other. Because the self is one. Brahman is all. Brahman is everything. There is no other. So what is there to fear? Even the death, the inevitable death of the body, is not a cause for fear because it's stated in the Brahma Sutras, in the third chapter, third part, that because the living realized soul is only waiting for the body to fall off, for the prarabdha karma to be finished, and then... He attains oneness with Brahman. This is the cause of liberation from fear and suffering, both. Because if one is not under apprehension that, oh, I could get this disease or, oh, I could get, you know, mugged or killed in war or starved to death or whatever, then there is no suffering, no fear. There is no other, there is no fear. This is enlightenment, a jivan mukta. Huh? The situation of the jivan mukta is very special because the karma from previous lives is wiped out completely by the realization, aham pramasmi, I am Brahman. And the karma due to fructify in subsequent lives is also knocked out because he's no longer going to take birth. He's no longer a jiva. Jiva means one who takes birth. One who is born will also die. Whatever has a beginning also has an end. This is the relative world. This is the world where suffering and fear exist. But in the absolute world, there is no such thing. No birth, no death, no fear, no suffering. 
no other, only Brahman. Unlimited, boundless, infinite, supreme, full of existence, knowledge, and bliss. This is Brahman. So one who has realized Brahman has nothing to fear. He has no need for any kind of crutch, any kind of rationalization. I was reading this article by this guy. He's a, a life coach, huh? which is like another word for an unlicensed therapist <laughs> living in Southern California. Of course, where else? And he's presenting this elaborate rationalization of how one can be free from fear. And of course, this can only work in a society that is opulent and that is comparatively free from danger. This guy, you know, he lives in a gated community in Joshua Tree, huh? which is like a tourist destination, a beautiful desert resort. And, you know, he's got the money to shield himself from all suffering and for, you know, sophisticated therapists and expensive drugs. <laughs> so he's created this little mental bubble where he thinks he has no fear. But I tell you what, plop him down in the middle of a combat zone that bubble is going to bust. Because in a combat zone, fear is what allows you to survive. Listening to your fear, noting your fear and following what it's telling you to do. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Find some cover, you know. These things are are necessary for physical survival in a difficult environment. Most of the world is like that. Difficult, competitive, nasty, harsh. But, you know, in the bubble of Southern California with a six or seven figure income because you're advising, you know, CEOs of companies, right? You have to create the bubble that everything is cool, everything is safe. I'm in love with life. It's all beautiful. Right? And that is your product if you're a life coach. The illusion of no fear. The difference is that illusion can be busted in a minute by a drive-by shooting or... Oh, an act of war. Uh, there could be civil war in the U.S. soon. You know, any kind of things like that would immediately end his nice bubble of fearlessness. But the fearlessness of an enlightened being cannot be disturbed, no matter what happens. Because why? He knows, I am not the body. I am not the jiva. I am Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. It's not just a nice saying. It's a state of being. We talked last time about the plant worm. The plant worm grips the leaf that it's on with its hind legs and then extends its forelegs to the next leaf or the next branch. And then when it has a good grip on the new branch, then only it lets go of the old one and transfers itself over. In the same way, one who realizes Brahman lets go of this body, even in this life, because he has a firm grip on Brahman. He has a strong realization of Brahman. He sees everything from the point of view of Brahman. And of course, from that point of view, there's no fear because there's no other. 
nobody else to do me no harm, as the song goes. Huh? I rode through the desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> right? You don't think of yourself as an individual being. When you realize Brahman, you feel you're the whole. You're everything. So that what is there to fear? The death of the body is no fear because that means the end of suffering, the end of the delusion of I am this body, I am an individual and all that. One has to tolerate that only as long as the body exists. But when it's over, then comes release. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.